coin on. Hey there, YouTube coin community. This is Dustin with CoinOp. Today, we are going to be taking a look at some of uh, Mr. Robert Lawson's cherry picks and finds. Now, what he had done is he went earlier in the week to a few coin shops and bought up as many bulk bags of buffalo nickels and silver wartime nickels that he could as long as he was able to get them at a really good price. So what he did is he took them all home, he searched through them all heavily, and I'm going to show you some of his finds. Now I will do another video that shows some of his Lincoln Cent finds, and this one I'm just going to show you his Jefferson nickels and his buffalo nickel finds just from this last week. Now do keep in mind that um, every single coin that I'm going to show you is up for sale on his eBay. I will post links to his eBay. So if you happen to like one of these and you want to own one, you can. So kick back, relax, and enjoy these images. Okay, first up, we are taking a look at a 1939 Jefferson nickel. Now this one is a double die reverse. Once again, this is a double die reverse. This is a cherry pickers variety. It is also listed in the red book. This is one of the more popular double die reverses for the um, Jefferson Nickel series. Now do keep in mind that uh, now this is a very strong double die. Uh, doubling is very evident and obvious all over the reverse details. You can definitely see it down in five cent on Monticello, just all over the place. So this is just a really, really cool variety. This is a beautiful double die. Like I said, this is up for sale on his eBay, so you happen to need a 1939 double die reverse. Well, there you go. Go check it out. As I did state, I will post links to his eBay. Uh, the other coins will be going over a little bit faster. Now, at the end of this video, I do want to talk a little bit about our giveaway that we are going to be doing later on this evening or tomorrow morning. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Now we are taking a look at a 1937D Buffalo Nickel. Now this one is RPM 1. This is a best of variety in John Wexler's files. So if you were to be on DoubleDie.com taking a look at the Buffalo Nickel varieties and you see this one, it is listed as a best of variety. Once again, this is Repunch Mint Mark number 1. Now we are taking a look at a 1920 Buffalo Nickel that is listed as a two feathers variety. Now what a two feathers variety is, if you look towards the back of the head, you can see two main feathers. There should also be a small third one in between second feather and this hairline. And on the two feather varieties, it is missing. Two feather varieties have recently in the last few years become pretty popular. So you will find these every now and then when you are searching Buffalo Nickels. Now we are taking a look at a 1936D Buffalo Nickel. Once again, this is a 1936D or Denver Mint. This one is listed as WRPM-003. Uh, this is RPM3. Once again, this one is listed as WRPM-003. So this is a repunched mint mark. So this one's a pretty cool variety to find. Now there are a bunch of different repunched mint marks for a lot of the uh, Buffalo Nickel series. So do keep your eyes open for them. Now we are taking a look at a 1921 Two Feathers variety. Once again, it is missing the small third little tiny feather between the second feather and the back of the neck or hairline. This is a Two Feathers variety. It is missing its third little feather. Now we are taking a look at yet another 1920 Two Feathers variety. Once again, this is a 1920 Buffalo Nickel that features what is known as a Two Feathers variety. What that is, is uh, the Buffalo Nickel should have three feathers on the uh, headdress. The Two Feathers varieties 
clearly only have two. It's, it'll be missing the third small feather on the headdress. And once again, this is a two feathers variety. Now we are taking a look at a partial date two feathers variety. Uh, what a partial date is, is on Buffalo Nickels, on the inverse, the date is typically the first thing to wear off. So when they hit lower grades, the date will fade off. So uh, partial date means you can only see part of the date. We are unsure of the exact year, but this is a two feathers variety. Once again, this is a partial date that is a two feathers variety. Even though it is a lower grade coin, two feathers varieties can carry a nice little premium. It's still worth taking a look at. Now we are taking a look at a couple various 1945 Philadelphia Mint uh, repunched mint marks. Now I'm going to admit something to you guys here today. Uh, I, I've been all week, I have been under a lot of pressure. I've had just a lot of stuff going on. So I have not had the time to actually go and research these two varieties and see exactly what repunched mint mark they, they are. Now if you were to go to DoubleDye.com or VarietyVista.com and look up the Jefferson Nickel uh, repunch mint marks and you go to the 1945 Philadelphia Mint, there are a bunch of different repunch mint marks, a whole bunch of them. So I suggest you go check out one of those sites and search some of your own. But here's uh, just a few examples of some of the repunch mint marks that can be found in the Philadelphia Mint 1945 Jefferson Nickel series. Now we are taking a look at a 1942 Jefferson Nickel. Once again, this is a 1942 Philadelphia Mint Jefferson Nickel. This is a Silver Award time nickel. This one is also a repunched mint mark, but this one is listed as repunched mint mark-014, repunched mint mark-14. Once again, there are a lot of different repunched mint marks for the 1942 Philadelphia Mint, mint Jefferson series. So I suggest you go take a look. Go check out uh, Variety Vista or DoubleDye.com and take a look at the various varieties. Now we are taking a look at one of the most popular over dates that you are going to find. This is a 1943 over 2 Jefferson Nickel. This one is listed in Cherry Pickers. It is also listed in the Red Book. So if you were looking through the Red Book to coins, looking at values and prices, this is one of the few varieties that you will find in there. The Red Book only lists the most popular varieties that are out there. So this is definitely one of them. And what you can see is the 1943, the last digit, the three, has been punched over top of the remnants of a two. So this is a 1943 over two. Once again, this is a Red Book variety. It's also listed in Cherry Pickers. It's a very beautiful overdate. Now we are taking a look at a 1943 Philadelphia Mint Silver Wartime Nickel that has a nice lamination flaw going up the reverse right through the mint mark. Now with the... Uh, nickels they had a lot of uh, problems over the years with lamination issues so this is a nice lamination flaw basically it's from uh, improper metal mixture and you can see the lamination crack just runs right up through the mint mark right there so i thought it was pretty nifty i wanted to show it to you well there you go we hope you enjoyed that video just to give you a little heads up, all of those coins that I had listed, every single one of them, Robert Lawson has found just in the last week searching a big pile of bags of coins that I showed at the beginning. I'll show it right now too. Now those are literally the bags that he searched for these, and these are some of his finds. Uh, if you're interested in any of them, they are up for sale on his eBay. I will post a link to his eBay so you can go check out these listings for yourself. Now we do have a giveaway coming up. As soon as we hit 30,000 subscribers, we are giving away a few double dyed coins that myself and Robert Lawson have both autographed the reverses, the two by twos that they are held in. We are gonna be giving away from our website, some of our digital downloads, along with some of our coin collectors kits. 
So if you have not been to our website, it is varietyerrors.com. Once again, it is varietyerrors.com. Now, when the contest does start, it will start as soon as we hit 30,000 subscribers. So that should be either later on this evening or tomorrow morning. So definitely be looking for our giveaway. I will post a video as soon as we're up to 30,000 subscribers, uh, letting everybody know exactly how to enter our giveaway. If you would like to help our channel, you can do so by hitting the thumbs up button. The more you hit the thumbs up button, the more and more it encourages YouTube to share our content with more and more people. You can also help our channel by sharing our content and subscribing. The more people you share our content with, whether it's on social platforms or to friends and family, the more and more it encourages YouTube to continue sharing our content with even more people. So hit the thumbs up button, share our content, and subscribe. Once again, thank you for your review. Hope we gave you something to look for, something to search for, and have fun.